Okay, hi and welcome to another video. This time I'm going through the Matt 2012 question two. Now, uh, yeah, I'll be honest, I didn't get on well with this question, to be fair. I don't think I would have got a brilliant score with it in uh, exam conditions. Don't get me wrong, the first three parts are easy and the last part is really, really difficult, which is kind of similar to a lot of like uh, Matt questions, I think. They, they, they do get more difficult towards the end. You know, you do get that kind of brick wall feeling like you do with all these tough questions uh, when you get to a certain point but the first bit is really quite straightforward I mean what have we got here we've got two functions one doubles it one adds one I mean how hard can this question be uh, they also tell you that and this is fairly uh, conventional if you've got f and a number up here that's going to represent doing f several times to x so in other words we're just saying that like if you had the compound function f of f of f of x rather than write it down three times you can just write that and that is not to be confused with f cubed which would be f times f times f we're not doing that that is not what this means it means f of f of f so Let's show first that f squared g of x, I shouldn't say squared really, f, f2, f superscript 2 g of x equals g f of x. Well, f squared g of x equals, well, we start with g of x, that's 2x, and we add one and add one again. It's clearly 2x plus 2. I suppose we'd show some working. <laughs> um, and the other way around, g f of x, well, we're going to add one first, then double it. And that is obviously exactly the same. You can say, hence, you know, f squared g of x equals g f of x. Do, you know, actually comment letting the examiner know that completes the argument because you've shown the left hand side. Makes it real clear if you're like, you know, that was a, well, you know, sometimes people write left hand side and right hand side. It makes it clear, you know, what you're talking about the left hand side of this and the right hand side of this. And you've shown that that's both. Both lead to the same result. Anyway, that's easy. You're probably absolutely fine with that bit. Okay, part two. This is harder. Um, you've got to, firstly, they give you part of the answer here. They've got to find all the other ways of combining F and G. I suppose they're trying to flag here. You know, there's there's quite a few ways of doing this. Not loads, but quite a few. Now, try and be systematic. If we begin with F, then, well, F is ab1. Um, what could we do then? Well, bearing in mind, and this is where actually a little bit of like a strategy is helpful before you start. G must be used twice here. Not three times, not one time. G must be used twice. Now, why is that? Because G is the only thing which messes around with X. And you need to get from X to 4X, so therefore you need to double it and double it again. Yeah, there may be various times you have one, but that isn't going to double X or quadruple X. And so G must be used twice. Um, F, F must be used once, twice or four times, I think it's fair to say. Oh, four times. Um, I'm, yeah, sorry, my handwriting gets really bad here. Maybe I just should just say that F must be used once, twice or four times. And that's because, you know, you can either add one, then double it and double it again. Or you can, you know, double it, add one, double it like, uh, you know, like um, there's there's various ways of, you know, double it, add one, double it. Um, and then add one and add one, I think, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways of doing it. That's what we're about to find out. Write down all of those. But, you know, it can't be used three times. And that's because after you double three, you're going to get to six. You're not going to leave a plus four on the end. Whereas you can like, you know, um, uh, double one twice to get to four. And that's why one's allowed. So anyway, if we begin with F, and we add one first. Um, you've got to then do G twice. Yeah. In other words, that's the only way starting with F that you're going to get to 4x plus 4 at the end. If you were to do f next, and you're going, going to go from x plus 1 to x plus 2, it sounds great, but then you double it, and you get to 2x plus 4, and then you still got to double it at some point, and you're going to get to 4x plus 8, and you're going to be well over the target of just 4 on the end. And hence, that's the only way, beginning with f. It's the only way, yeah? Now, we've already got, you know, let's just write down the one given first, because this one starts with, uh, sorry, it's this one here. This one starts with G, G, F squared, G of X. Yeah, that clearly leads to 4X plus 4 because it's 2X, add 2, and then we're doubling that. And so that's 4X plus 4. Um, now, what other ones starting with G? Because we've ruled out there's no other way of doing it starting with F. There really isn't. You know, if you do F and then F next, 
Yeah, that's no good. I suppose you might be thinking, oh, can I do F and then can I do G and then can I do F again? Like, um, well, let's think about that. F, X plus one. G, you're now at um, 2X plus two. Well, if you were to do F again, you'd be then at 2X plus three. And like, you know, then after doubling it, you're going to be well above the four. So I hope you're convinced that way is the only way you've got beginning with F. So if we start with G this time, and maybe we would go all the way to G squared. So we're already at 4X. The only thing you can do then is add one four times. So F square, F, F4 G2 X, that will be 4X, you know, that's G of G of X. And then we're going to add one, add one, add one, add one. And so that's 4X plus 4. So we're up to 3. That's not bad. And there's only one more, actually. And, you know, like I say, be systematic in the way you think. But just, you know, rather than using G twice, and that's definitely the only way using G twice, use G just once and then maybe do F once. OK, so we're at 2X. We're now at 2X plus 1. And then you could double that you'd be at 4x plus 2, and then you could do f again twice. Do you see what I mean? So we're at 2x, add 1, double that, and then add 1 and add 1. And can you see that we've now exhausted all possible ways of doing it? This is the only way with g followed by f once. This is the only way with g twice. And this is the only way with g followed by f twice. There's no other ways of uh, organizing it. And I hope you can convince yourself as you work through that journey of a question. It's like, um, it's hard to be systematic there, but it really helps. Okay, part three is easy because all we need in part three is to determine what f of i of g, of f of j, of g, of f of k, of x equals, yeah? Well, this is really not that bad because we're going to be adding, oh, sorry, we're going to be, uh, yeah, just applying um, f, which is add 1, k times. So let's start with that. That's x plus k. We're then doubling it. We're then applying fj times. Well, that means adding 1j times. So we're going to add on j. And then we're doubling it. And then we're adding on another load of i's. Yeah, well, 1i times. And so we're adding on i. OK, so what have we got here? We've got um, 2 times 2x plus 2k plus j plus an i on the end. And so that simplifies to 4x plus 4k plus 2j plus i yeah okay great you know i kind of wondered why they made me do that and then it was the next question now the, the last part is the hardest bit and it's worth six marks so it's really important to have a good stab at it but i'll be honest i think uh, this one would have beaten me in the exam but you know i want to show you actually uh, you know because once it clicked it really didn't seem too bad like like any question but um it's it you know it's quite difficult i suppose but OK, how many different ways are there of combining the functions f and g that result in 4x plus 4m? Well, this is similar to 4x plus 4. It was just a case where m was 1. And you've also got, also got just 4x case where there's only one way of doing that. And that's g squared because g squared is 4x. There's no f's involved or anything like that. So, you know, that's immediately telling me, OK, m is 0. There's only one way of doing it. g squared of x is the only way you're going to get to 4x. M is 1. We worked out there were four ways of doing it. So M is zero, one way of doing it. M is one, four ways of doing it. So that's what I'd say straight away. In terms of how many different ways there are of combining the functions F and G, there's one way when M is zero, just G of G of X. And then there's four ways of doing it when M is one. And that's what we just figured out up here. So I'm just trying to link it to the last few parts of the question. Yeah. And get a handle on, you know, how we might count how to do all of this. Now, my screen's getting really busy here. Uh, <laughs> apologies. You know, sometimes the working out can get messy, can't it? So I'm just going to pull this over. Just give me a moment. Ah, here we go. It just gives me more space to work. OK, so I'm just going to write down what we just concluded this equaled as well i think it was 4x plus 4 um k plus 2j plus i yeah so we've simplified that now yeah what's really interesting about this is when you think about this this represents all the different ways of combining f and g 
yeah because these can be zero and f of zero just means it doesn't take place in other words we can make any combination of f and g's using this coding system and it's a coding system where each unique triple corresponds to a different way of combining those functions yeah so for example i is zero j is one k is two corresponds to g of f of g of f squared of x yeah and that's the only way of writing that combination because obviously order matters in composite functions so we're just you know finding a way basically of writing down all possible uh, ways of combining the functions now we need to figure out how many ways there are combining it to give 4x plus 4m so it seems fairly obvious to equate the two and you can see the 4x's are going to cancel straight away when we consider how many ways there are of solving this and it's helpful to write down actually what we're about to do because what we're going to do with this equation we want to find all the different triples for i j and k there are which satisfy this equation in terms of m. That's what we need to do. So we need to count the solutions to this, the integer solutions for i, j, and k, the integer triples for i, j, and k. And naturally, our answer will be in terms of m because it's dependent upon the value of m, giving answer in terms of m. Cool. OK, so let's try and do that. Now, this isn't obvious. Um, it's worth thinking about, as I did just mention, like, well, when M is zero, there's one way of doing it. When M is one, there's four ways of doing it. You could probably guess the answer maybe from that. Uh, you know, what pattern comes next? One, four, ooh, you know, what sequence in math starts like that? But um, anyway, <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, how are we going to count up these integer triples yeah and give the answer in terms of m well what i did first was i looked at this and i thought well let's just talk about when k is zero yeah let k equal zero yeah now remember k well we'll talk about how big k can get in a minute actually let's just let k equal zero first and then obviously what you've got is 4m is 2j plus i yeah well if you let j equal zero now set j equal to zero do we get a unique value for i yes we do because i will be 4m and as m is by definition an integer this is no problem i is an integer we haven't broken any rules because i j and k must be integers so it looks good so j is zero i will be 4m cool that's always going to give me a solution i can always make k zero j zero and i can be four times whatever number they've given for m yeah so let's say we're dealing with 4x plus 12 then m is three and i can just have i as 12 yeah and that will definitely solve it in other words you know um that would correspond to this being just f12 times wouldn't it um gg f12 g squared x but um yeah anyway like uh that's one way of doing it so we've got one well let's you know iterate and go from j equals zero to j equals one i is then going to be 4m minus two cool don't really care what this equals i'm just counting the ways now i'll be able to proceed with this logic all the way up to j is 2m now why must i stop at j is 2m well because when j is 2m this equals 4m and i is going to be zero and this strategy i'm basically saying as this goes down this increases all the way up to its maximum which is 2m since m is strictly positive and so j must be and, and j is also strictly positive so yeah clearly that's going to be the highest j can be so we go from zero to 2m now how many ways have we got of doing that then here well, be careful. We've got 2m plus 1 ways of doing it because we start from j is 0, yeah? In other words, I've found 2m plus 1 solutions, but I've only considered k is 0, yeah? I've only considered k is 0. Now let's let k equal 1. Yeah? But we get a similar like nice systematic pattern because if k is 1, this is going to be 4m take away 4 is 2j plus i and now i can use a similar argument j is zero i is 4m minus 4 j is 1 i is 4m minus 6 this time because that's going to be a 2 and so we're going to take it away again look at 4m minus 6. we can use this 
all the way down to i is zero again because this is once again this is decreasing straight you know from an even number but taking away an even number each time all the way down to zero um what do we uh you know what do we get when i is zero clearly 2j is going to be 4m minus 4 in other words j's maximum is uh 2m minus 2 yeah that's here it was 2m now it's 2m minus 2 now how many ways are there of doing that well remember we're starting from zero so there are 2m minus 1 ways of doing that yeah because we're counting very systematically here all the triples for i j and k first i've said count all the triples where k is zero and i came out with 2m plus 1 triples for j and i or well they're now doubles when i set k equal to zero i've now got that many doubles 2m plus 1 doubles when i set k equal to 1 i find there are 2m minus 1 of these pairs of i and j um naturally i can keep doing this yeah k equal 2 there's going to be 2m minus 3 just to convince you k equals 2 you're going to have 4m minus uh 8 here because k was you know if i quickly flash this k you know if k is 2 4m minus 8 and so same old process j is 0 i is 4m minus 8 um you know because i've got 4m minus 8 equals 2j plus i uh and so yeah you know and so on and so forth all the way down to j is 2m minus um this time if you think about because i is going to be zero this is going to be half of that so that's 2m minus 4 c and now we've got 2m minus three ways of doing it yeah and that's nice because at this point you've broken like uh, the you know the crucial thing and part of the question which is difficult we've now got a way for counting all these up this goes on up to k equals m now why must it stop at k equals m well because that's when k is m this is like the other extreme value once you've got to k is m 4m equals 4k clearly k can't be bigger than m like m plus 1 because you'd have 4m plus 4 then on this side you've got a number on this side which you haven't got on that side that's not possible no we need and it's because i and j are strictly zero or bigger when i and j get to zero k equals m yeah and how many ways are doing that well we've just said it just one if k equals m you're going to have zero equals 2j plus i now remember i and j and k are greater than or equal to zero so this can only be solved when j is zero and i is zero how many ways are there of doing that one way of doing it yeah i strongly encourage you to check if you don't if you're not convinced k equals m minus one and i bet you there's three ways of doing it yeah um because this is forming a pattern it's the odd numbers so all we've got to do is add up the odd numbers now add up the odd numbers starting from 2m plus one all the way down to one yeah so this is what we really need to do to count all the triples one plus three plus five all the way up to 2m plus one yeah now hopefully you recognize that there's a very famous result that uh, some of the odd numbers is square numbers um so this is definitely going to be you know a function squared you could write it out in sigma notation like this uh there's various ways of writing it i'm going to write it as 2r minus 1 so i get 1 at the start if i put 2r plus 1 here then i can't start from 1 down there but that means there'll be m plus 1 up here in other words there are m plus 1 terms in that sequence convince yourself that that's true there's m plus 1 terms here um, now if you want to add up m plus 1 terms you can treat it as an ap if you like as long as you have a is 1 d is 2 and uh, the number of terms is going to be m plus one and then you know or you could do it like the further maths way which is fine um, let's do it like this so the sum of m plus one terms is just uh, n over 2 uh, 2a plus m minus one which is going to be m times d yeah factorize out a 2 it will cancel with the over two here and you'll get m plus one squared which looks right because do you remember earlier we said when m is zero there's one way of doing it when m is one there's four ways of doing it when m is two there's going to be nine ways of doing it um, and so on and so forth um, it's just a square numbers but yeah really tricky question though i think like that last part is not easy i don't think i'd get it right in exam conditions but hopefully you will hopefully you will that's uh that's my approach uh i hope you enjoyed it and all the best Bye bye